We're on the junior penetration tester path here on TryHackMe. And in today's video, we're actually going to try to cover subdomain enumeration. Previously, you've seen all of these. So in the in previous videos in this series, which you can find on my YouTube channel, you've seen me covering all of these that have been before the subdomain enumeration. So let's get into seeing what exactly subdomain enumeration is. First, we're going to start the attack box and also start the machine, unlike in the previous video when I wasn't actually sure what to do at some point in time when I had the attack box started, but the, the machine in itself has not been started. So it took me a while to figure it out, but bear with me. I'm new to try hack me. I'm new to the new try hack me. I don't do CTF ish stuff. And since this is um, a junior penetration tester path, I said, why not actually try to go over it and see whether or not it's actually going to go towards CTF ish because to be honest, if it is, if it is, if in future videos or, or if in future rooms is actually going to tend towards ctf -ish stuff, I'm just going to quit and leave it because, to be honest, life is short and you, I don't personally want to do stuff that I don't like. For example, if it doesn't help me grow as a penetration tester, I'm not actually going to do it. When it comes to subdomain enumeration, I would say that this is more towards cybersecurity research and bug bounty hunting because... When you're actually doing a penetration test, when you're testing on a certain target, you usually don't deal with targets very large, such as Google, for example, or Microsoft.com, where you have hundreds of or thousands or hundreds of thousands of subdomains. So it doesn't actually apply very good to penetration testing, but it is good to know. So subdomain enumeration is the process of finding valid subdomains for a domain. But why do we do this? We do this to expand our attack surface. So this is really important. If you're doing cybersecurity research, one of the probably the biggest thing that subdomain is going to get you is a higher attack surface. Subdomain in of itself isn't going to find your valid vulnerabilities, but what it actually what it actually is going to do is to give you a greater attack surface so that you can have multiple to try and discover more potential points of vulnerability, which is really good. We will explore three different subdomain enumeration methods, brute force, OSINT, and virtual host. All right, I'm curious about the virtual host one because I mostly do brute force and OSINT. And a lot of people don't do brute force when it comes to cybersecurity research, which is where I get a lot of extra points versus other researchers when I actually do bug bounty hunting on Synac. Start the machine and then move on to the next task. Okay, so this is CTF-ish stuff. What is a subdomain immersion method beginning with uh, B? I mean, who actually, this was created by TryHackMe. TryHackMe, if you want to level up yourself, don't do this kids related stuff. Try to actually guess something that you've just said here. This is, why do you even have this? Anyways. OSINT SSL TLS certificates. So when a uh, TLS certificate is created for a domain by a certificate authority, most people don't know this. CAs uh, take part in what's called certificate transparency logs. So whenever a, like they said, whenever a certificate is created, they also need to create a certificate uh, transparency log, which is publicly available for everyone. The purpose of certificate transparency logs is to stop malicious and accidentally made certificates from being used. We can use this service so something that's been used for a certain purpose can be used by cybersecurity researchers to their advantage 
to discover subdomains belonging to a domain site. And a lot of people are actually using cert.sh for that purpose and also uh, the transparency report from Google, which both offer searchable databases of certificates that show current and historical results. So you have to go to cert.sh and search for the domain tryhackme, which is more like a penetration tester or a cybersecurity researcher would do. This is more common knowledge than this nonsense. What's here? What is a subdomain enumeration? What's the purpose of that? Come on. So go to cert.sh, search for tryhackme, find the entry that was logged at 2020, December 26. Hopefully today. So we're looking for 2020, 26, 12, 26, which is the store try hack me. All right. OSINT search engines. We've covered this in the previous content discovery room. So search engines contain trillions of links to more than a billion websites. Which can be excellent resources for finding new subdomains. So this, it's worth mentioning that you not only have Google, a lot of people only use Google for Google dorks, but you also have Bing.com and other search engines which have similar operators to the ones that are used for Google dorking. Now using advanced search methods on websites like Google, Bing, DuckDuck and others such as the site filter can narrow the search results. For example, site, site would only contain results leading to the domain name domain.com but exclude any links. So for example, if you use site dub 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 in this case, this one would only contain results leading to the domain name but exclude any links to dub dub dub. Therefore, it only shows us subdomain names belonging to domain.com. If you do this, the minus actually tells you do not look for this site but do look for everything else that belongs to tryhackme.com. And it only gives us two results, but if we probably use other methods, we'll very likely get more results. Let's see if this works on Bing as well. What about just that? What about like this. If we say minus dub dub dub, it's exactly what we're getting. We can try this on Google as well. I believe Bing gave us more results. In this case, this is what we're actually looking for. So the folks actually creating or who created the try hack me should actually know better and uh, update their room. What is the try hack me subdomain beginning with the B? It's probably the blog. Right. DNS brute forcing. Not a lot of people do this. So brute force DNS enumeration is the method of trying tens, hundreds, thousands, or even millions of different, so it's probably in the ballpark of millions of different po possible subdomains from a predefined list, commonly used subdomains. Because this method requires many requests, we automate it with tools to make the process quicker. In this instance, we're using a tool called DNS Recon to perform this. Click the view site, button to open the static site and then run the DNS recon request. So as you can see they've been using DNS recon minus T 
maybe tactic brt brute force minus domain can we actually modify this no so it's a predefined fixed command no file was specified so minus t is probably brute force you cannot even type here regardless what is the first subdomain found with the dns recon tool it's api acme it support thm sublister to speed up the process of osint again open source intelligence subdomain discovery we can automate the above methods with the help of tools like sublister which is kindly given a link to its github page latest release is from april 2020 click the view site button to open up the static site and run the sublister so in this case this is actually a python tool if we look at it it's over here thousand lines of code pretty straightforward which is you can actually encapsulate a very powerful tool in just thousand lines of python code which actually is only goes to show how powerful this programming language is which is why actually i would highly encourage you to try to learn python and bash if you still have room to learn something else you would I would actually suggest learn JS because if you're in cybersecurity and penetration testing, you would be doing a lot of manual code review, or I'm actually doing a lot of manual code review in my penetration tests. Oftentimes, or better said, in recent penetration tests, after I finish or more, one of the latest or last parts of the penetration test is actually when I'm looking over their code and more often than not probably 90% of the cases I do find issues within the code regardless getting back on track what is the first subdomain discovered by subluster as you can see, it searches in various different search engines using passive methods. And then, so probably is only using only passive meth methods. Totally unique subdomains found. Web 55. Acme IT support .thm. Finally, some subdomains aren't always hosted in publicly accessible DNS results such as development versions of a web application or administration portals. More often than not, there are multiple. If you're dealing with a large target, there, there is much more to the subdomain list than you're actually going to be able to discover via passive and active methods. The DNS record could be kept on a private DNS server or recorded on the developer's machines in their Etsy host. If they're in a Linux environment or Windows System32 drivers Etsy host for Windows users, which actually maps domain names to IP addresses. So one good way is to actually look into these files whenever you're on a target. If you have access to the target, to the machine itself, look into Etsy host either on Linux or on Windows to see if there is anything mapping to if there is any if there is certain domain names mapping to different IP addresses because web servers can host multiple websites from one server when a website is requested from a client the server knows exactly which website the client wants from the host header we can utilize this host header by making changes to it so this is a very interesting method changes to it and monitor the response to see if we've discovered a new website like with dns brute force we can automate this process by using a word list commonly used of commonly used subdomains now in our attack box let's actually type this out 
or at least try fuff minus w for word list it's user share word lists word lists sec lists discovery dns and then name lists minus h so minus h on fuff is to provide for specific host header for specific header for a specific request header not host header in this case it's actually the host header and then you say fuzz there is usually a space i'm not really sure in if if in this case it is a space yes it is so fuzz this is actually where fuff is going to fuzz this is actually where fuff is going to replace the words in the nameless.txt so it's gonna be word from nameless.txt dot acme it support dot thm in this case minus u for the target or the url http 10.10.194.5 the above command uses the minus w switch to specify the word list we're going to use the minus h it's exactly what i've explained because the above command will always produce a valid result we need to filter the output so we've got a lot of output here a lot of output which is why as you can see these are the ones that have been valid so to speak probably others as well but anyways we have to uh, specify the minus fs switch which actually tells us to, sw to filter for a certain size in this case the above command should have revealed two positive results that we came across so when you actually specify the minus fs filter you also have to specify the size because you just say minus fs it's going to give you an error in this case what would be the size what is the first subdomain discovered what is the size that we're actually looking for in this case we're actually looking for to filter the size is 2395 so we have to exclude that using the minus fs 2395 in this case if we run it one more time we can see delta and yellow so the first one is delta and the second one is yellow alrighty